get together. Good morning and praise the Lord, River Region. God bless you and we thank you for being here this morning. Change Christian Center is always on time for the Lord. We're just excited what the Lord is doing in our lives. You know, this morning I was in prayer and the Lord spoke to me about a, uh, what my husband had talked about about three weeks ago, a, a little bit more than that. If you want to bring revival to the River Region, you have to bring it every Sunday. Yeah. So I feel like maybe we have failed you a couple of times. But we're back on track, not saying that we have failed God. We may have failed you. We're back on track and we're bringing revival back to the River Region. We're going to bring it every time we sit on this platform. We're going to bring it every song that we sing. We're bringing praise. We're bringing worship. It's yeah. not my church against your church. It's about us against the enemy. And yes. the enemy is defeated. Change Christian Center is bringing revival. And we love God for that. Yes, we love Lord. God because he is good to us. We love God because he is merciful. He is a kind God. He has kept us over the weeks. He has kept us over the months. Yes, we see it every week. We see what's going on. We see the inflation. We see yeah. the deaths. We see the killing. We see in the murders. But God is still good. It is our job to sing to God to pray. It is our God to, our, our job to sing to God to intercede yes. on behalf of others. Yes. And we're going to do that this morning. Lord, we thank you thank and we you. praise you for who you are. Yes. We thank you because you've kept us another week, Lord God. With everything that's going on around us, Lord, you had a hedge of protection about us, God. Yes. You let your angels be encamped about us, Lord. As we laid down last night and woke to another day, God, thank you were you. there, Jesus. And we want to say thank you. Thank, thank you. you for who you are, God. Open up our ears and our minds and our understanding for what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour, Lord God. Let us not grow weary and well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Yes. Let us continue to hold on to your promises, God. Your promises are still yes and amen. We're trusting your word this morning, God, and we're going to stand on those words. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, God. Has God ever made a way for you? Yes. He's made a way for us. Amen. I just want to bring to the platform the singer of the hour, and we're going to worship with you in song in Jesus' name. Jesus Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank, Thank, you. Jesus. Thank you, God, for being so good. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. I will. Thank you, Jesus. You are here. Thank you, Jesus. Working in this place. Yes, Lord. I worship you. Hallelujah. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I'm 
I'm not going to sit here and have a pity party, but I, I remember times we had to borrow money for food. And yes. when we didn't have lights in our home, and our children had to go through things that they need to go through, not that we are abusive parents or anything like that. It's because we were growing in the Lord, and the Lord had to show up and show out like he said. He will provide everything that we need. Do we pay our time off or we do? Then those times we need to have enough to give to the Lord. But he made a way out of nowhere. He made yes. a way of escape for us, and I thank God for that this morning. Thank I thank you. God that he is still making a way out of nowhere. Yes. When I want to leave places and don't even want to do the things that I do, God gets me up out of the bed. You know what? Just do it one more day. Let me give yes. you some strength to get through this. Just one more day that you can do it. And I'm thankful for that this morning. I'm yes. thankful for him being a way maker and a miracle worker. As my niece was singing this morning, I think about some of the things that we saw them go through growing up. You know, not bad things have the hand of God has been on her life and her family's life right now. And I'm thankful for that. I see him making ways for them. I see the sacrifices and the provisions that God has been doing for them. Maybe if you don't know, but I know I see God I see him in all things. And I'm very thankful for that. Not that we're the biggest, baddest people or anything like that, but God is a way back there. He makes promises and he's a promise keeper. And I'm thankful for that this morning. My scripture this morning that I, as I was reading my daily devotional was in the book of Isaiah, and I'm not going to hold you long. Pastor Les is going to come preach. was in Isaiah 61. Um, I want to say it's 1 through 3. I was reading it. He gives you beauty for ashes, yes. and the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And the Lord had to slow me down. And he said, if I give you beauty for ashes, that means that you've been burned before. Yes. And I'm making you beautiful out of those ashes. I'm giving you oil of joy. Yeah. Oh, that means that he has put some anointing on your life oh, that you would have joy. I thought the oil that ran from Aaron's beard, I thought about that, that the anointing is on my life and those that are around me. And he said he'll give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Some of us may have gone through some things and we're carrying these garments on, but this morning I solicit to you to throw those grave clothes off and give the spirit of praise unto the Lord. And you've been down too long. The Lord has given me that word and I hope that it blesses you this morning. Thank you, God. I thank you all for being here. For those that are on social media and those that are local in the church inside the, um, the building this morning, we're grateful for you. Change Christian Center wouldn't be here without you. We're just grateful. God brought us here to the River Region. It wasn't by choice, but it was about the Spirit of the Lord. If it was left up to us, I'm sure we'll be in sunny California right now or somewhere near the beach or near the water. But God has placed us here and we're thankful. We have gained a lot of friends here. Our family is here and you are here. River Region, we're here for you. We're here to bring revival back to this city. We're here to flood the, the gates of hell. We're here to burn down what Satan has put against us and rebuild the River Region through fasting, through prayer, and through sanctification unto the Lord. If you're here this morning, we thank you for being here. I want to talk about giving. If you haven't given or you feel like you want to give to this ministry, or plan a seed, however you want to put it, www.changechristiancenter.org. You'll find donations there, whatever. You can put your prayer request there. You can put whatever you want to. You can put a shout out to us on there. We appreciate you. We can't be here without you. We can't do any of this without you. It's not a one man show. It's because of you all that we're here this morning. And we thank you for that. I want to pray again this morning for Pastor Leslie. He's about to bring the word. And I pray that you all are attentive to the word of God. Because you know what? If we can come into a sanctuary or a church, wherever your church is, we know the church is you, is in you. But you can have the deaf ears. You can be thinking about what you're going to make for supper today or how the kids are going to get out of school, what we're going to work, or what have you. But I ask you right now, if you can be attentive to the word of God, God is going to speak something to us this morning. There's never been a time that God has not spoke to us. And I believe it's going to be a spoken word this morning. Lord, we thank you. We, we praise you for the word. Thank it has not been brought this morning, but I know that you placed a word for Leslie this morning. And Pastor Leslie, she, he has a word for your people. I pray that you would give him strength. I pray that you would unstop deaf ears. I pray that you would just give us a spirit Thank of you. listening and a spirit of worship through the word. God bless you. We bring Pastor Les to this platform in Jesus' name. God bless you all this morning. Thank you for being here. Um, I was listening to my wife as she was speaking. And I'm going to tell you just my own testimony like my wife hit on a few minutes ago. I know Jesus to be a way maker. I know him to be a miracle worker in my own life. Um, I can start from growing up. I can start from adulthood. I can look all through my life and I can see the hand of God moving. It's nothing that I did, nothing who I am. It's because of who he is. He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. And God, that same God is here today. That same God is moving 
uh, throughout the earth. He's looking for someone that he can move mighty on their behalf. And that's the God that we serve this morning. That's why we're here this morning, because he is worthy of every praise, every hand clap, every amen, everything that we do for him. He is worthy for it. We can't praise him enough. So I'm excited, always excited to be in the house of the Lord. Um, don't get me wrong, I like to do other things. My wife mentioned the beach, and I couldn't help but smile because that's my, that's what I love. I love the beach. I can be a beach bum. I can go there and just flop out and just stay there. Um, that's my hangout spot. But, you know, other than that, or above that, is being in the house of the Lord because uh, he's just done so much for me. Um, and I don't want <laughs> I don't want to recap what my wife said, but I am going to bring up the point. Um, when I was in the hospital, I was I stayed 10 days in the hospital, 10 days. And the doctor did come in. He was not sympathetic. My wife used these words, bedside manner. I don't, I don't know where, I think he left in their home that day, but he said, he just walked in, looked at me first time he ever met me, he walked in and said, you walk around one more day and you would be dead. Yeah. And that resonated with me because um, that told me that one more day, I would have been dead. So just before God moved, just before um, he caused the chain reaction to happen that put me in the hospital so I would not walk around another day and I would not be dead. So I'm here today because of his grace and because of his mercy. And I thank him for that this morning. Amen. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to read out the book of Mark today, chapter 16, uh, verses 1 through 7. Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 7. I'm going to read out of the King James Version. The Bible says, and when the Sabbath was passed, it had passed. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him, meaning Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone? from the door of the sepulchre. And when they had looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. So it was a big stone. They put it across and in the front so no one could move it. Uh, and when they came, they was already gone, so it was great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were afraid. No, they were afraid. And he said unto them, be not afraid. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. But he is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. I want to take my verse, my uh, text from verse 7. It says, But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee, and there you shall see him as he said unto you. So, just for a few minutes this morning, I want to talk on this subject. He goeth before you. He goeth before you. I am pretty sure that most of us are like me regarding Peter this morning. You look back at your life and you wish that you had a second chance to make some other decisions and you had to make a second chance in some of the things that you did and different actions and reactions to the things that you did in life. And likely that's especially true when it comes to our relationship with God. My question this morning is, have you ever promised God that you would do something and then you didn't follow through with what you promised? Have you ever promised God that you would re repeatedly quit doing something only for that promise to blow up as soon as you made it? Have you ever denied Jesus with your words or your actions or your lack of actions that you need that God, you say, I'm going to do this, but somewhere along the line you get distracted and you did not do it. If you fall into that category, I know that I do. If you fall into that category, I want you to know that I have a word of hope for us this morning, a word of encouragement this morning that I want us to take and hold on to. If you're weighed down by the guilt of your past sins and you feel like God can never forgive you, that he can never use you, then you need to hear the word of God this morning because God has a word for you. Amen. Thank you. I want to back up and say 
at the end of Mark chapter 15, as we go into chapter 16, we find that Jesus' body has been taken down from the cross. He has been crucified. And, they, and the Bible said they was in a hurry to get him in the tomb before the beginning of the Jewish Sabbath. And uh, therefore, so they took his body. They didn't properly uh, prepare it for burial. They just buried him into the tomb, or they put him into the tomb and rolled the stone in front of it. So that's the backdrop to verse to chapter 16. So in our opening scripture, the Bible tells us that early in the morning after the Sabbath, the group of women, they headed to Jesus' tomb because they had spices with them that they was going to anoint his body. And that's when they, they would anoint the body, they would wrap the body. But they didn't have time to do that because the night was falling. So when they arrived to the tomb, the stone, the Bible said, had already been rolled away. And they were greeted by an angel. Mark described him as a young man. He was dressed in a white robe. He told the women, do not be afraid. Do not be alarmed because the body of Jesus, which was laid here, is no longer here. He is, he is risen. And the angel showed them the place where the body was laying so they would know that Jesus would not, was not there. And that brings me to verse 7. The angel instructs the women to go tell the disciples that Jesus was alive and that he was going to meet them in Galilee. It is in verse 7 that we find out that along with the other four Gospels, Matthew, Luke, and John, that two words are only spoken by Mark. The only spoken by Mark out of the four uh, Gospels. The two words that when he spoke them, if you go back and read them, it's refreshing to your soul. It's, 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 it's refreshing to a thirsty soul. It's two words that it brings liberty to someone that's been held mentally captive. What two words am I speaking? Verse 7 said, but go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you in Galilee. You may be wondering why the angels singled out Peter in that verse. He was one of the disciples already. So why did they have to say go tell the disciples and Peter? Over to understand it, then we have to go back into history a little bit. Over the last three years, Peter had left his job of fishing. He left his business of fishing. And he came to follow the new preacher that was on the block. The new preacher name was Jesus. And he left everything to follow Jesus. And he had come to understand that Jesus was the promised Messiah. And he had promised Jesus that I will never turn away from you. I will never leave you. I'll always be there with you. And even if I have to die, Jesus, I will always be there with you. But when Jesus needed him the most, Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. Not once did he deny him. Not twice did he deny him. But three times he said, I don't even know the man. And Luke reveals that as Peter denied Jesus the third time, Jesus turned and he looked at him. And when he looked at him, Peter realized that he had denied the Christ. He, did, he realized that he had said, did exactly what he said he was not going to do. The Bible said he broke down and he wept. So the next three days, you could imagine that it had to be miserable for Peter. I could imagine that he had a hard time sleeping, thinking about denying Jesus. He probably didn't feel like eating. There was nothing anyone could do to console him or to encourage him or to lift him up. But those words spoken by the angel and Peter... Everything changed when he heard that. When, it, when they came and said, Jesus said, meet them in Galilee. All you disciples and you too, Peter. His life changed around. Everything that he was yes, yes. feeling went from depression to joy. He said, Jesus did not forget about me even though I forgot about him. Jesus did still honored me even though I denied him. Those words meant for Peter and for us. It means a simple thing. It meant that failure is not final. I don't care how many times you slip up. I don't care how many times you fail God. Your failure is not final because he is a God that forgives. He's a God that he's a God that knows exactly where we're at and what we're going through. The pressures of life, the trying of life, the things 
things that we go through. Uh, and even though we're going to fail him, I may fail him tomorrow. I may fail him the day after tomorrow. But my failure in his eyesight is not final. I wish these words would, would just resonate over and over in our mind. And it's true for us. With these two words in Peter, Jesus began the process of giving Peter a second chance right. and restoring him so he can carry out his assignment. What was his assignment? To carry the gospel to the four corners of the world and to feed his sheep. So what am I saying? Regardless of what you go through, no matter how many times you fail him, God has a mission for us. Right. And, and our failure is not final because he is going to do what he destined us to do. We're going to complete what God called us to do. Uh, he will forgive us. Uh, he will restore us. Uh, he will raise us back up because our failure is not final in his eyesight. And the same is true for us just like it was for Peter. So as we gather here this morning, I am confident in saying that at some point in our lives, every single one of us have blown it with God. Right. We tripped up, we fell, we, right. we made a mistake. Maybe we've never done it quite to the extent of Peter. Maybe we never verbally said that we do not know Jesus. We might not have verbally said that. Maybe we not, haven't done it quite to that extent. But I'm pretty sure that all of us have let God down in some various ways throughout our lives. And if it were possible, we would go back and do some things differently. But these two words that the, that the, the people spoke to Peter and the two words that I'm speaking today and Peter reveal that in Jesus, a second chance is possible. You cannot do enough for him to turn his back on you. You cannot do enough for him to disown you. You cannot do enough for him to forsake you. God has put those two words for us to resonate on, for us to read, and for us to meditate on. And Peter, you can take out Peter's name and put your name in it. That revealed that there is a second chance that's possible for each and every one of us. So I want to speak to those this morning who feel all alone. You have been written off by those who you thought loved you. All of your frenemies abandon you because you're not doing what they are doing. And it feels like you're living for God all by yourself. The pressure to quit is too much. The enemy is on your heels day and night. I have a word for you this morning. You are not in this alone. He will go before you. That's the topic this morning. He will go before you. He told him I'm going before you in Galilee. Only thing you have to do is come behind me because if he go before you, he's going to prepare a way for you. And he prepared a way for them and he'll prepare a way for us. The journey may seem long. You have questioned whether it is worth it. The grass looks greener on the other side. But hear me this morning. You are not alone. He will go before you. I want you to hear the words of the Lord this morning. In Isaiah 41, he said, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. What does that mean this morning? I'm talking about to, to the abused one, the neglected one, the one with low self-esteem, the one who is laughing on the outside but crying in the inside. Side, the one with the broken heart and the broken dreams, the one who is trying to live for God the best way they know how. Why is that significant? Because he opens a river in the high places. That means that the water will cascade downward. You may be in a dry and a barren land, but he is sending a refreshing. He is sending a refreshing for you. The water is refreshing. The water is cooler. And he said, I'm going to go before you. I'm going to go to the high places. And when you're in the low place, I'm going to open up a river and let it flow down on you to refresh you. Very good. He said, I'm going to go before you this morning. You are not alone. Hear the word of the Lord. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3 said, I will go before thee and I will make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut it some of the bars of iron. And I will give the treasure of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, am the God of Israel. 
Psalms 107 and 35 said he turned the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. I don't care what you're going through this morning. Not that I don't care, but I do care what you're going through this morning. You may be in a dry place. You may be in a drought. Maybe it's spiritual, physically, financially, emotionally, socially, whatever the case may be. You may be in a dry place, but the Lord said, I'm going to open up a river. I'm going to open up a spring. I'm going to send a refreshing to overshadow you, to wash you, to refresh you, to give you a fresh anointing this morning. You may have failed the Lord in times past. Some may not let you live it down. They may continue to bring up your past. People make you feel like you're all alone. Institutions may make you feel like you're all by yourself. But the Lord says he is with you and he will go before you. I don't know about you, but that's exciting this morning. It means that I'm not by myself. He said I'm going to go before you. So if he go before me, every crooked road will be straight. Every willingness will have water. Everything that I need will be provided because he goes before me to prepare the way up. I want you to know this morning that God will go before you. I don't care. Don't let the enemy uh, bring you down. Don't let the enemy get in your mind and tell you that you're all alone. Don't let the enemy get in your mind and tell you that God does not care about you. Don't let the enemy get in your mind and let him tell you that there is no God. I came here to tell you this morning that there is a God that sits high and he looks lower. He and he feels our infirmities. He knows the way that we take. He knows everything about us. And he said when you get dry, when you get thirsty, when you can't see your way, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to open up a river. If you're in a dry place, if you're in the wilderness, I'm going to bring water to you. Whatever it is, he said I will do it. He's going to turn your mourning into dancing, your tears into laughter, and your loneliness into a Holy Ghost party. I want you to know that that's what we need. Our spirit needs a fresh anointing. Our spirit needs a Holy Ghost party. Our, our spirit needs to connect with the Almighty God. He will provide. I want to encourage somebody this morning to get back up. Dust off yourself. Get back in the race. Jesus, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is going before you. The Bible said he is the lily of the valley, the bright in the morning star. He's that which was, which is, and which is to come, the almighty. He's God all by himself. He don't need anything, and he don't need anyone. That's the person that's going before you. That's the person that's making a way. That's the person that's fighting your battle this morning. In fact, the Bible is a story of second chances. Think about it. When it came time to choose a man to lead the nation of Israel out of Egypt, how many of us would have chosen a murderer? Come on. Exodus chapter 2. I'm talking about Moses. Yes, he killed the Egyptian. And he ran for Pharaoh. And for the next 40 years, God prepared Moses for a second chance right. while he cared for his father's sheep. Why is that important? Because he showed him how to be a people person. He showed him how to love people and to care for people. But he didn't show it to him in the palace. He showed him how to do it in the wilderness while he was taking care of sheep. He prepared him for a second chance. And if he prepared Moses, which was a murder for a second chance, how much more would he provide and he would show for you? Exodus 3, 9 and 10 says, Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel had come unto me, and have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, this is the Lord talking to Moses, come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, my children, out of Egypt. Moses was not a model citizen. He did not always get it right. He was a fugitive from justice, but God saw what people did not see. Right. He told Moses to go, and I will go before you. The Lord see you, and he sees what other people do not Come see. On. They see what you used to be. They see what 
what you used to do. They see how you used to talk, but God sees who oh, you're going to be. He sees who he's shaping you into. He sees the future because he sees what we cannot yeah. see. Amen. To them, you're just another person. You are not holy enough, but in him, you are a vessel fit for the master's use. Yes, amen. Who would have ever thought on, that a man who was consumed with lust could become a man okay. after God's Come own on. heart? He who would know that he would become the greatest king that Israel ever had. I'm talking about King David, 2 Samuel chapter 5. But that's what happened. God gave David a second chance. 2 Samuel 5, 4 and 5, the Bible says David was 30 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. In Jerusalem, he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. We like to recall who people were. We like to remember that they did certain things. But God likes to see them beyond their faults. Right. He likes to see me beyond my faults. Oh, he like, he likes to see me beyond my failures. He likes to see us who we were going to be. He oh, saw I'm Moses yeah. being a deliverer even before he was a murderer. He saw David oh, yeah. being the greatest king that ever lived over Israel before he even committed adultery with mm -hmm. Bathsheba. He saw who he was going to be even before he became who he was. And God sees us who we're becoming. Every single day, we're becoming who God wants us to be. We're not perfect. We haven't made it yet. We haven't arrived yet. And we will never arrive until Jesus Christ come and perfect us. But in the meantime, every single day, we are growing up. We are calling. We are trying. We're forgetting those things that are behind. We're reaching forward. For the high calling of Christ Jesus. We're not perfect, no. We're not claiming to be perfect. But I know a God that's going to go before me. I know a God that's going to make a way for me. And if I get up and I put in the work and I do everything that I can do, he will look on my faith and he will increase my faith and he will help my unbelief and I will see him face to face. That's what Job said. He said, I, the, 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 the canker worms, they may eat up this flesh, but he said, I will see God face to face. We want to see him face to face, church. We're going to see him face to face. We may see him with tears running down our eyes. We may see him with pain. We may see him with suffering. We may see him with whatever thing. But the main thing is we're going to see him. He told the disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and receive you unto me. That where I am, you may be also. What is he saying? He said, I'm going to go before you. You can't do it by yourself, but I am God all by myself. I can do all. I can do all. Church, don't let people get you down. Don't let people drag you down. Don't let people discourage you. God has given you a word. He said, I am going to go before you. Oh my goodness. Yes, amen. He will go before you this morning regardless of your faults and failures. He will provide every need according to his riches in glory. He will make the crooked road straight. He will provide water in the room. That's his word. It's still yes and amen. It changes not. It's forever settled in heaven. If he said he's going to do it, he he's going yes, to do it. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. You may be here locally. You may be on social media. But God is with you. God said, I am going to go before you. With God, failure does not need to be final. Let me say that again. With God, failure does not need to be final. Don't let the people tell you that you can't make it. Don't let the people tell you that you can't do it. Don't let the people oh, tell you yes, that God yes. is not real. Don't let people tell you that you have to, you don't have, you can just live fancy free and do everything. There is a God that loves you. Yes, yes. There is a God that's making a way. There is a God that said, I will go before you to ensure that you are victorious. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to be victorious. And not in myself, but I want to be all that I can be 
for the Lord. I want to do whatever it is that he called me to do. I want to be able to preach or teach. I can't sing, but I want to be able to do whatever it is that God has called us to do. Because in the end, church, it's going to be worth it. In the end, it's going to be worth it. I go back to what Job said. We're going to see him face to face. We're going to see him as he actually is. We're going to see him in all his glory, in all of his splendor. Our mind goes back to Isaiah. Uh, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple up. He said, I, I saw the angels flying in heaven. They were going back and forth in heaven. And they were crying, holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. I want you to know this morning, the whole earth is full of his glory. He's a God that sits high. He's up there in heaven. The angels are flying back and forth. In his presence, they worship. In his presence, they cry out. How much more than we, the people that that is made in his image ought to give him glory. He went before them in the Old Testament. He went before our fathers. He went before our forefathers. And I want you to know that he's going to go before us this morning. He's going to go before our children because he said, I am going to make a way. I am God. Not me, but he said, I am God. I will make a way. Let's stand this morning. God, thank you, Jesus. I believe your word this morning, God. You said that you will go before us this morning. I believe, God. I believe that you're going before us. I believe that we put our trust in you, God. If we put our faith in you, oh God. Lord, if we just trust you and believe in you, God. I know that you will make a way out. I know when we are drought, Lord, when we are thirsty spiritually, oh God, that you will send a refreshing, oh God. Lord, I know when we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, I know that you will be there with us. I know your rod and your staff will comfort us. God, that's what your word says. It's forever settled in heaven. Forever. God, I want to thank you this thank day, oh God. Not because of who we are, but Lord, because of who you are. You're the Lord God Almighty. You're Jesus Christ. God broke the depression. Yes. God, I thank yes. you today, oh God. You know the way that yes. we take. You know the plans that you have for us, oh God. And I just bless you this morning. God, don't let us uh, God, don't let us think that we can come into your presence, oh God, any kind of way I ask you, Lord. Lord, right now, Jesus, Lord, that you will search us. Let your light shine down from heaven. God, if there's sin in our life, anything that will separate